Hi, I'm Steven. Do you know what is this small metal uh, prong? What is really useful on the all uh, manual focus Nikon lenses? Do you know what is really useful? In 30 years ago, when I first got my Nikon lenses, my friend and I, we usually, we always talk about uh, Nikon lenses, but we all didn't know what it's really useful. We all thought it may be a mark of the Nikon lenses because it looks mm, beautiful. So in this video, let's start from uh, these little things on the Nikon manual focus lenses to shortly and simply talk about the history of the Nikon lenses. And then I will share with you some tips about uh, how to choose the old Nikon lenses, like which one was the excellent in the Nikon history. So let's start it. 30 years ago, we all didn't know what it's really useful until I bought a Nikon Mata camera. Finally, find out this metal prongs really useful. Actually, it's named meter coupling shoe. The Nikon Mata camera was produced by Nikon uh, from 1956 to 1978. And already, uh, the camera have the metering function, the light meter. The metering requests the camera to know uh, which aperture you set by the lens. The camera at that time basically all mechanical manuals camera. The metering indicator was uh, very simple, just a floating needle up down up down to indicate the metering result. The Nikon All 2 series lenses at that time be called non-AI or pre-AI. Now let's call the camera at that time as Pre-AI2. Looking at the Nikomat camera, there is such a coupling pin right here. Since the Pre-AI lens, there have been such a meter coupling shoe. When the lens is mounting on the camera, the aperture must be set to f5.6 first. So that when the lens is mounted, the meter coupling shoe just sandwiches the coupling pin on the body. And then rotators to the left finish the mounting. So in this way, when moving the aperture, the camera can know the aperture set and get the correct metering result. In other words, use the this meter coupling shoe is the oldest communication way between the camera body and the lens. It was used on Nikon F, early Nikon F2, and the Nikon Mat cameras. In the 1977, Nikon upgraded the lenses systems and began the AI generation. This is the beginning of an automatic generation, so it be called auto-indexing the AI. There are several differences between AI lens and the pre-AI lens. Number one, no longer use the meter coupling shoe with the coupling pin to transmit the aperture information. AI lens have a coupling ridge that can catch a meter coupling lever on a ring surrounding the lens mount on the camera. It is spring loaded. When moving the aperture will push the coupling lever to move together. So that can tell the meter the aperture setting. With AI lens, you can mount the lens on a newer camera at any aperture setting without having to set it at f5.6 first each time. Number two, there is a second set of small aperture numbers on the aperture ring. The camera can read the small aperture numbers through a small window right here. And you can see the currently the aperture directly in the viewfinder. Number three, for the new AI lens can still be perfect used on a pre-AI camera, Nikon retained the meter coupling shoe but made some subtle changes. You can see two extra holes on the meter coupling shoe to let light hit small FA and F4 numbers, so that all small aperture numbers can be easily seen uh, in the viewfinder. 
Of course, when you mount an AI lens on a, a pre-AI cameras, you also need to set the aperture to f5.6 first because the coupling pin on the camera body. Here, I want to talk about Nikon F3 again. Uh, you can check my previous video, the Nikon F3 review. Nikon F3 can see the aperture number clearly in a completely dark environment by turning on a small light. Uh, Nikon F4 also has the same function. They are truly professional cameras. That's great. After a few years in 1980s, Nikon lenses were upgraded again, changed from AI to AIS. In the 1980s, the automation of cameras went a step further. In addition to aperture priority exposure mode, there are shutter priority and program exposure mode. But AI lenses can only be used in aperture priority mode. So Nikon made an upgrade, introduced the AIS lens. The upgrade of the AI lens is the when the lens is set at the smallest aperture, the camera can use the shutter priority mode and the program exposure mode, which means the aperture can be controlled by the camera body. But in 1980s, as I know, the Nikon cameras, they most of them uh, almost only have the aperture priority mode, like uh, uh, Nikon FE, FE2, uh, FG, FG20, and uh, F3. I think the only one camera have the shutter priority mode at that time was the Nikon FA. Of course, the AF generation began in 1980s too. Uh, the F501 and the Nikon F4 in 1988. They all have shutter priority mode and uh, many kind of uh, program exposure mode. These AF cameras can achieve shutter priority and uh, program mode when using AIS lenses. The AIS lens has no changed so much, and the meter coupling shoe is still retained. But one thing I don't like it about uh, AIS upgrade, the lens the focus the lens focus ring stroke become shorter. This is the change for the uh, faster focus. But if you're using a vintage lens to shoot a video, I think the AI was the best choice because the, it have the modern multiple coating and also have a long focus stroke. Of course, the pre-AI also a very good choice because the all metal lens body and the beautiful build quality and they have a very unique picture quality. Come to AF generation in 1990s, Nikon finally cancelled this uh, meter coupling shoe on the all AF Nikon lenses. I think that's okay. You know the meter coupling shoe the only for the older camera, the pre-AI cameras the metering function, but after 20 years, that camera, the metering function still alive, I think uh, almost gone. It is very interesting, Nikon still left two tiny screw holes on the AF lens, which give a choice for those who are still using pre-AI cameras. They can remove the meter coupling shoe from the older lenses and uh, install it on the AF lens. So most of the Nikon F and the Nikon F2 camera still can be used in now. But uh, without this meter coupling shoe, you also can mount the AF lens on the older cameras. That's no problem. But now the G series lens, they even cancel the aperture ring with very light plastic lens body. So unfortunately. Okay, we just have started from this uh, meter coupling shoe to talk about the history of changes in Nikon lenses. 
the most commonable of the Nikon is since the 1959, the, the first Nikon F uh, until now, the mount almost the same even uh, currently digital SLR cameras. In most cases, you can use a Nikon lens of any generation on a camera of any generations. There is no problem. I think Nikon is the only one to like this. Now let's look at the adaptability of lens used in different generations. First of all, look at pre-AI. Here are two situations, original pre-AI lens and the AI converted pre-AI lens. The original pre-AI no need to be explained, but the AI converted lens refer two types. Type 1, in later 1970s and early 1980s, Nikon would upgrade pre-AI lenses for about $20 each one. So they would work with new AI compatible cameras. Nikon did this by designing brand new aperture ring dedicated to each lens. When you sent a lens to Nikon, they replaced the old aperture ring with a brand new factory part. These new parts were designed to match the cosmetic and the color-coded apertures of each lens. These were the perfectly factory upgrade. Type 2, DIY conversion by yourself. Since Nikon no longer does these conversions, some people hack away at the aperture ring. They use a file to file out a ridge similar to AI lens. If you do like this, the lens will lose its collection value, but it can let them work on a newer cameras. This lens, the Nikon SR2 50mm 1.4 lens, I was DIY converted by myself. The above two types of lenses are called AI converted lenses. The original pre-AI lens cannot be mounted on the AI or AIS Nikon SLR cameras because the newer camera have this meter coupling lever. However, it can be mounted on the Nikon F3 and the Nikon F4 and can be used normally because F3 and F4 body have this release button. When push the button, you can turn the lever up then you can mount the lens on camera. But the metering result will have some problems. No matter which aperture you set, the camera is always calculated by the wide open aperture because the meter coupling level of the camera is not linked with the lens. But when you not use aperture wide open, you can press the depth of field preview button to get accurate metering and use the full manual mode to shoot. But if you mount an original pre-air lens on a mirrorless camera with an adapter, that's no any problem. Pre-AI converted lens is the same as AI. Whether it is in pre-AI camera, AI, AIS, even AFSLR and the current DSLR can be used normally. Nikon's DSLR body also has meter coupling level so that today's newer DSLR can still use any AI or AIS lenses and the converted pre-AI lenses. But Nikon's top-level DSLR camera like D3 and D4, they are cancelled the release button that support for original pre-AI lenses like F3 and F4. So the wide adaptability of the AI, AIS or um, converted AI is unquestionable. But the Nikon G-series lens is not. The G-series lens has no aperture ring except a newer camera body with aperture control. It can be used on a mirrorless camera, but the adapter must have aperture adjustment. Okay, which Nikon lenses you like? AI, AIS, 
or pre-AI. I think the AI lens uh, is the best choice because the more cheaper and uh, with a long focus stroke. But personally, I love the pre-AI. Now let me share with you some tips about how to choose the old Nikon lenses. And in the history of the Nikon lenses, which lens are outstanding and uh, you should have. So who knows more accurately? Of course, Nikon knows it himself, but he won't tell you. So who knows? Some people know. The answer is the NASA. The NASA knows. The NASA has been using Nikon since the earlier. Although their customized cameras and the lenses are very different from ordinary products, but the optical design of the lenses, they are same. I was found that NASA was very smart. Their choice was always very precise. So why NASA knows about a camera lens? I think the answer is only one. That was Nikon sharing it with NASA. But Nikon never said any uh, on public. First, let's look at 50mm focal lens. Is the most common 50mm uh, f1.4? No, NASA didn't choose the 50mm 1.4 lens, but a better choice. The 55mm f1.2. The 55mm 1.2 from pre-AI to the AI uh, NASA has selected them all. In the AIS generation, Nikon discontinued the 55mm f1.2 and changed it to 50mm f1.2. The optical design has not changed. Surprisingly, this lens was still in production until 2005. Maybe you can still buy the brand new uh, 50mm 1.2 now. Another 50 focal lens lens, NASA chose a 55mm micro lens. The 55mm micro lens, NASA was choose all version from f3.5 to f2.8 of pre-AI, AI and AIS. It can be seen the strength of this micro lens. The 55 f3.5 lens is very cheap now, but its sharpness maybe will shock you. Number 2, 35mm f1.4. NASA looks was very love this lens. From the pre-AI to AI, AIS has chosen 35mm 1.4. I have this AIS version and uh, its performance totally uh, surpassed the uh, average of Nikon lenses. My friend, he is a Leica user. I remember he was said, Nikon 35mm 1.4 lens is the only one can uh, compare with the Leica lenses. Number 3, 28mm f2. This lens is very famous and have a nickname called the Bass Eye. I have this lens, but I haven't used it more, uh, unfortunately. I will definitely share this lens with you when I have more experience in the future. Okay, the above is my experience sharing with the Nikon lenses. If you have some experience and information and any questions, you can uh, leave the message below. Thanks for watching. See you.